G'day there, Ray Corcoran here. In this week's video, we're gonna be talking about the Australian mortgage cliff. Now, the media is calling it the mortgage cliff to make it sound more dramatic. In this video, I wanna unpack what is it, how did it happen, how does it affect you, and also, uh, more importantly, what should you do about it? And as always, if you like the video, please give it a like and please consider subscribing. We do low quality, poorly researched videos every single week. So what is the mortgage cliff? So it sounds very, very dramatic, but basically it, you know, it's because we've had very, very low rates for several years now. And the cash rate, which is the uh, rate that uh, the Reserve Bank lends out money, that has been under 1% for quite a while now. And the problem is now that you know, it's been a few years now and people that had a two year fix, three year fix, four year fix, that sort of stuff, they're starting to roll off from a fixed rate to a variable rate. And the variable rate is significantly higher than what they were used to with their uh, fixed rate. Now, uh, this has happened to me as well, and I'll talk about that in a moment, but it's a big problem for a lot of people because some people have actually overextended on their loan and borrowed probably more than they should have. Banks do factor in, uh, you know, a two or 3% buffer typically. So if you're borrowing uh, at an interest rate of say 3%, they'll kind of assume or they'll kind of calculate to make sure that you could afford it at five or 6%. But what I think has happened with a lot of people is they've kind of gotten used to that very, very low monthly repayment for say an investment property that they have and they're kind of just living life as normal. And a lot of people have kind of forgotten that that rate's gonna end and when you get off that rate, it's gonna be uh, quite a bit more. In some cases, it can be more than double what you were paying in the past. And since October 2019, the cash rate's actually been uh, at 0.75% or lower during that time. So it's pretty incredible. Some people were even talking about negative interest rates potentially being on the horizon. But for now, that is all nothing to worry about because the interest rate has definitely been going up and the cash rate has uh, been going up over the last few months. And there was a lot of people that took out multiple uh, investment loans trying to build a portfolio very quickly usually a low deposit, 10% or whatever. And what's happened is for a lot of these people is their equity may have gone up, but then it's come back down again. And now their interest rate is gone up quite a bit. The holding cost has increased. And some of these properties that have gone from uh, cash flow positive are now uh, cash flow neutral or quite negative. So uh, it's a bit of a challenge for people. And if you've got multiple properties like that and you're on an average salary, you might be in a bit of a sticky situation right now. And uh, you know, it's, it's part of the reason for me, I've always put 20% deposits down on my investment properties because I don't like going into the deal with uh, a low amount of equity from day one. Now, the downside of that is that I grow my portfolio slower, um, but I do it with less risk and I do it knowing that I probably will never need to tip any extra money into that property again. The rent will cover the expenses, the interest and all that sort of stuff. And basically by the end of 2023, you know, there's gonna be a lot of people that were probably on rates like around two, two and a half, fantastic rates. And they're probably gonna roll off to like five, five and a half, six percent, or even more than six percent. You know, I'm on more than six percent for one of my loans that's just rolled off, which I'll talk about in a moment. But it's, uh, you know, it's gonna be a big shock to a lot of people. And for people that are on a average salary, they might be struggling to find out where the cash is gonna come from. One of the big Queensland banks, they actually did an analysis on uh, Google search trends, and they actually found that the searches for the word refinancing had actually increased by a staggering 5,000%. So a lot of people are looking at refinancing right now uh, and trying to, you know, rejig things so they can improve their situation and improve their cash flow. But you can kind of tell there are a lot of people that have kind of really got this uh, quite front of mind at the moment. And recent data released on the 30th of January, 2023 by the uh, Australian Bureau of Statistics, they found that in November, they had the biggest amount of refinances in history. So it was a whopping $19.5 billion of loans were refinanced, which is literally the most ever um, in Australian history. So there's quite a significant amount of people that are refinancing at the moment. Everybody's scrambling to get a better rate. And you know, every single month, you know, you've got a new rate rise, new rate rise over and over. And everybody, including myself, you know, I'm, I'm looking at, you know, what is the best rate that I can be on for each of my loans? Because it does add up, you know, if you've got, especially if you've got multiple loans or you've got one loan that's a big loan, um, it does add up quite quickly. And the last six months specifically have actually been the highest number of refinances in, you know, lending Australian lending history. So this is, there's never been a period in Australian history where people have been doing more refinances on their loans. So it's pretty staggering. It's affecting a lot of people. In terms of my portfolio, um, I have a property in uh, Townsville in Queensland, and uh, that was on a fixed rate for two years at 2.59% 
which I was happy with at the time, and now I'm kicking myself that I did not extend it for longer. The repayment for that was around uh, $622 per month, interest only. And now that uh, fixed rate period has expired, and now it's actually rolled over to an amount of around $1,850 per month. And one thing I'd recommend checking with when you do roll over to a variable rate is what variable rate are you going to? This loan is with HSBC. You go on their website. I think some of their loans are like, you know, 4, 8 or 5 or whatever it is. Um, I actually rolled over to apparently their standard variable rate, which is actually a whopping 6.22%. So it was actually much higher than I expected. I kind of expected to roll off to like a five or something like that, uh, maybe a low five. Ended up being 6.22 and I'm in the process of negotiating that. Just be careful when you do roll off to see what exact rate that you are going to, because it might be bigger than you expect. And I know for me that uh, when the next property cycle comes around and maybe in a few years time, uh, it might be another 10, 15, 20 years before rates get this low again, who knows? But I know that for me, I will definitely be uh, locking in some rates. If I ever see rates in the twos or threes, I'll just cop it. Even if it goes lower, um, I'm still happy, you know, two, three percent to borrow a lot of money is uh, is a fantastic rate in my opinion. So uh, next time around, I'll be a little, a little bit wiser. So we know the rates are going up much higher for a lot of people. It's gonna cause a bit of pain and everything's costing a lot of money right now. So what can you actually do about this? The first tip is to speak to your bank or speak to your broker if you have one. Ideally, you speak to a broker if you can. They typically can get, can get more done than you as an individual working directly with the bank. There are some exceptions to that, but generally your broker probably will be able to get more progress than you will. The important thing as well is that you can make one phone call, you might be on hold for 20 minutes and you might speak to someone for five minutes, but in 25 minutes, you could get a rate reduction of 0.1%, 0.25%, 0.5%, depending on how high your current rate is. Depending on how much you've borrowed, that could be a few hundred bucks a month, it could be a few hundred bucks a year, a few thousand dollars a year, uh, it really depends. But either way, it's very, very good use of your time to have that conversation. And don't be scared to ask, and don't be scared to ask again. One of my tips would be to ask for a pricing request uh, with your broker and see that they can submit that. They'll typically have like a mortgage broking team and then a retention team. And sometimes you'll only be speaking to the mortgage broking team. You do wanna be going to the retention team who, whose job is to save customers and not let them go. And don't be afraid to ask for an escalation. So one thing that I'll typically do is if I speak to someone, be polite the whole way, be very, very courteous to people. That will get you much further than yelling at anyone. Be polite but firm and ask them to uh, review the pricing. They'll come back with either nothing or a small change. Then I'll typically ask them if that can be escalated. Well, I'll just ask them, can you please escalate this further? And then they will typically go back and find someone else. And then it might be another manager or a BDM or whoever it is. It'll keep going up the chain and they might tell you no again, or they'll be able to squeeze out another 0.1%, 0.2%, whatever it is. The point is some brokers, they might not say this to your face, but they're not gonna be as financially incentivized to do this for you. So they should do it as good customer service and building the relationship and hoping that you do future loans with them. But just keep it in mind that not all brokers are equal, not all brokers are good. And some brokers can't be bothered. You know, there's not enough money in it for them. They don't really care. Just keep that in mind. And if you do need to switch broker, do consider it. If you feel like they're doing a great job, then, you know, be loyal. If you feel like they don't really care, they're not really trying, um, and you know many other people that are getting much better rates with similar loans and situations, then it might be time to consider another broker because that could be the difference between a few hundred bucks or a few thousand dollars over the course of a year. In terms of other things you can do about it, obviously the second thing is to review all your other costs. So if your property loan has gone up by quite a bit, you wanna obviously negotiate that, bring that back down as much as possible. But then from there, you wanna move into reviewing all your other costs. So you can do that at the same time and go line by line through your credit card statement. Look for anything that you could be avoiding changing. Look at reviewing all your costs and trying to reduce that. The third thing you can do about it is increasing your income. Now, I've done a lot of videos about this on the channel, which kind of goes into this in a lot of detail, so check those out. What I'd recommend is uh, looking at how you could make more money, whether it's doing a side hustle, doing extra hours of your current job, picking up a second job, selling stuff on Marketplace to drive some extra cash, whatever it is, increasing income is always a good option. Uh, I know for me that I have a business, I know that I can do more work if I need to, bring in more money so that I can cover these extra costs. And tip number four is make the hard decisions early. There's a great quote that more is lost with indecision than a wrong decision. A lot of people will not do anything about this and they might be like, all right, it's gonna, it's gonna be a fixed rate for the next eight months or whatever it is, or I've got another year left and they just kick back. It's gonna be a shock, especially if you have a big loan or multiple properties, it's gonna be very challenging. So other stuff's gonna get more expensive in the meantime as well. What I recommend is make the hard decision sooner 
and make whatever cuts you need to cost. Do whatever you need to do to upskill or drive new income for yourself and have those conversations with the broker earlier rather than later. Making these decisions early and I would rather overdo it now than undercook it later and it kind of put myself into a bit of a, a tricky situation because you know there's a lot of talk of recession this year. Whether that happens or not is you know remains to be seen, but I would rather you know be uh, prepared for the worst and hope for the best than the other way around. So I hope you found that useful. If you have uh, a fixed rate that's going into a variable rate, let me know below uh, what you're currently on and what you're gonna roll off onto. We'd love to hear about that. And uh, if you have any thoughts around how people can have that conversation with their broker or with their bank, please chime in below. And uh, other than that, I'll see you on the next video.